I had a question today about measuring moment of inertia around a specific axis uh, in an NX model and, and wanted to walk through a few uh, principles around that. Um, so first of all, we're going to look in this particular assembly around the, the rotating parts that are going to be down here along this, this axis uh, at the bottom, the axle for the, the two wheels. So we've got, I think, uh, just to keep it simple here, five components down here that uh, will be part of that. There's a, a tire on each side, there's a hub on each side, there's an axle that goes through the middle, and we'll grab that guy and that one and that one, right? So they're five, those five components are the ones that we're going to look at out there. And if we look in our assembly here, find these in Navigator, we'll see that those are um, out there in uh, a couple of places, right? Uh, in fact, I think that's the other one. Yep, the other instances of those. So those five components are the ones that we're going to be looking at here as we uh, as we do this, right? Um, if we come into uh, NX and we turn on our mass properties panel, that panel will show up here in the assembly navigator. We'll see that down here. And we can see here, uh, with those five components selected, we'll see the aggregated mass properties of those five specific components out there, okay? Um, now the question that came up here was about what, what this moments of inertia centroidal means. Uh, and there's also a moments of inertia WCS down here, right? Um, so we're going to look at a, a couple of those and, uh, and see, some, see some principles here. Um, a couple of things we want to turn on. If you don't have this view triad turned on right here, then uh, we can do that by coming to, let me deselect here for a second, um, come here to the, the visualization preferences. And in the visualization preferences, uh, under the view decorations right here, we can uh, choose to show that view triad. This this usually is on by default. Uh, if in just in case it's off, that's where you can find it to turn it on. That'll turn on this guy down here, and this uh, of course is going to tell us kind of our global uh, directions, right? Which will be useful here in in just a minute. Um, let's. Uh, what is this? I'm just going to keep it kind of there so I can pick that that axle easily. <laughs> um, so, so we're looking at kind of an x-axis here, right? Parallel to the x-axis uh, of rotation. Um, another thing that I'm going to do is um, turn on in our options here for mass properties. I have right now a center of mass symbol that's going to display that, that's just going to be the one for a selected set of components. And it's going to be the combined center of mass uh, of that selected set of components. We can do that also for all of the selected components if we want to. I think in this case that this is going to overlap, and so uh, I, this is the one I'm really concerned about, right? Is the the collected set of of components here? So, so watch for a green center of mass symbol here as we as we work on this. Um, so with those kind of those two things in place, uh, let's look at this so far. Okay. Uh, so again, if we come in here and select these five components, um, we'll start to see here that green center of mass symbol uh, start to show up. So these two are uh, apparently symmetric this way, both of them, and uh, have the, the same center axis here, of course. So that, that center of mass so far is, is right there. We select one of these guys on the other side, or uh, the axle here, for instance, we'll see that center of mass start to move to the right here, right? That collective center of mass, a little bit, a little bit less mass there. If we add this rim and add this tire, then we'll see that move to kind of where we expect it, right? It looks like it's in the center. And uh, if we square up here on the side, it looks like that's centered in the uh, the hub here. Now, again, this is the centroid now, right? The center of mass, really, of these five selected components. And we want to look at, really, the, the rotation, the moment of inertia around the X axis here. So, so this guy here, the moment of inertia centroidal around the x-axis, this value, this 332021, three, three, right? We will remember that number because we're going to see that again in a minute. Uh, e to the sixth here, right? It is, is our moment of inertia around the centroid uh, with respect to the x-axis here, okay? So that's, that's a, a first look at that, right? If that happens to line up, in our case, it, it does, right? In our case, we, we happen to have the center of that at the center of, of what we're looking at here. So that's all good. Now, if that was not necessarily true, right? 
Um, the, the other one that we can use here is the, the work coordinate system or the WCS down here, right? The, the easy way to look at the w, WCS is the W key on the keyboard will show and hide the WCS. And so you'll see as I, as I poke the W key repeatedly here, it's appearing and disappearing up here in the, in the view. It's useful when you want it, and we can hide it very easily when you don't want it, right? <laughs> but conceptually, yeah, if we bring that up, here again, right now, it's aligned with the, these same uh, axes down here. Um, we can hover over this, double-click this, and, and move this really anywhere we want to, okay? Um, this provides us really an alternate frame of reference in which we can measure uh, a bunch of things, look at mass properties, construct geometry, um, um, put the XY plane where we want it, and do certain planar operations and things like that. Um, you'll notice that that center point or the origin handle is orange at the moment. By default, it's looking for a new place to put that, right? And so, for instance, we could come down here, grab this circle. I'm going just inboard on this circle, a little bit inside, and that's going to snap to the center point of that circle, right? So as I select this, we'll see the WCS snap down to that location there as well, okay? Again, our orientations are the same. You see the red X and the red X here aligning. I'm going to use my middle mouse button here to say OK, and that's going to drop the WCS right there on that spot. So again, the red, the blue, and the green are all aligned here, right, with the global uh, red, white, red, red, blue, and green here, right? So X, X, Y, and Z for the WCS are parallel at the moment to the, the, the main ones here. Um, so with that, what we can do is we can go and select those same five components again, right? So let's get our hub here again, we see our CG, see, see our CG moving, moving to the right there, and, uh, and that's over there where we expect it, right? Uh, now here we have the WCS X that, that's going right down the center of this, this particular axle here, right? And so if we come and look down here at the WCS moments of inertia now, again, for these five components that are selected, you'll notice that this WCS XX right here, so moment of inertia relative to the, the, the X-axis of the WCS, uh, happens to be that same 332021, right? So kind of confirmed here <laughs> what we were expecting uh, from before, okay? So a couple ways to look at that, right? If, if you know uh, that, that your center of mass uh, is, is in the center of the thing you're looking at, you, you could just look at the centroidal here and, and look at it in the direction that you're, you're interested in and we'll get that, uh, that 3320321 number, right? Uh, if, if we're not confident that that's exactly where it needs to be, you can put a coordinate system where, where you want to. Or if you know that this axis, for instance, is not lined up with the principal, uh, not principal's the wrong word, to the global XYZ uh, axes down here, right? Um, then this this may be in a different orientation. That's totally fine. Put the WCS where you want it and, and use one of the WCS axes to, to get uh, the, the number that you need there. Okay. So again, uh, looking at how to, how to extract those numbers, in particular moments of inertia about axes other than the standard ones, uh, this is a, a great way to do it. Okay. Hope you find that useful.